That's right, folks. C for comedy, A for Abbott, M for Maxwell, E for Ennis, L for Luke Costello. Put them all together and they spell camel. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. And draw up a chair for tonight's Camel Show, starring Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. Put away that bag of popcorn and stop eating. All you do is eat. You're getting fatter every minute. I am not getting fat. Everybody says I'm getting slim as an eel. You're getting slim as an eel? Sure. When people see me, they say, here comes Costello. What a slim eel. <laughs> hey, Abbott, besides, I don't want to get fat. Getting fat is expensive. Oh, how can getting fat be expensive? Well, I got a battleship tattooed on my chest. And every time I gain 10 pounds, I got to put on another lifeboat. Oh. <laughs> Don't talk sense. Just look at you. How'd you get that... Hey, how did you get that lump on your head? And all those bruises on your face? Well, last night I called on the little redhead that lives next door. Yeah. And she told me to take her in her arms and forget everything. And did you? Yes. I forgot that the lights were on, the shades were up, and her father was in the next room. <laughs> <laughs> Costello, you've got to stop chasing after every girl you see. Do you want to become a masher? I wouldn't mind being a masher if I could pick my own potatoes. I lie. <laughs> Look, what were you doing at the, this little redhead's house? Oh. You, you told me you had a date with Marilyn Maxwell. Well, I did have it, but Marilyn busted it. She didn't want to go out with me no more. She says we're intellectual opposites. You and Marilyn are intellectual opposites? Yep, she's intellectual and I'm the opposite. <laughs> I don't blame Marilyn. You've been taking up her time for a whole year, and you've never proposed to her. Oh, I did propose to Marilyn Abbott, but her answer had a string to it. Her answer had a string to it? Yeah, she told me to go fly a kite. I, uh... <laughs> You don't know how to propose to girls. You've got to make them think they are everything and you're nothing. I tried that too, Abbott. I said to her, Marilyn, I am nothing. I have nothing. I can't give you nothing. What did she say? Nothing. <laughs> I it out. Where, where did you propose to her? Well, in a lunchroom. We were eating meatloaf. Ah, oh, no wonder Marilyn keeps turning you down, proposing to a girl over a plate of meatloaf. You should take her out and gaze at the stars. The skies are full of things we know nothing about. So is meatloaf. I... <laughs> oh, hello there, boys. Why, it's Marilyn Maxwell. Hey! Ah, oh, Marilyn, Marilyn, my love, my love, Marilyn. Come put your arms around me. Like this, Louis? Yes, now hold me tighter. Tighter. That's it. Just hold me. Okay. How long do you want me to hold you? For 30 days. If nobody calls for me, I'm yours. <laughs> well, I got the next line. Excuse me. Well, Marilyn... <laughs> Ma Marilyn, <laughs> when I'm close to you like this, I can't seem to break away. Something keeps snapping me back. Is it love? No, you're standing on my garter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Priscilla, you seem in a good mood. Why don't you pop the question again? Huh? Okay. Pop the question again. Okay, Wait. Marilyn, you know how I feel about you. I don't know how to say this, but do you think that two people could live on $75 a week? Well, what are you talking about, Lewis? I make that much myself. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Lewis. The man I marry must be romantic. Well, ain't I romantic? Didn't I come to your house Sunday night and bring you a big box of Cracker Jacks? Yes. <laughs> Didn't I? Then you held my hand, and I held your hand, and then you held my hand again. Is that any way to make love? No, but do you know a better way to make a box of Cracker Jack last all night? <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn, I'll prove to you that I can really make love. I'll give you a real burning kiss that will set you on fire. All right, Louis, give me a real burning kiss. <laughs> there. How was that? You better throw another log on the fire. <laughs> well, oh, Keith. Did you hear that, Costello? Oh, Marilyn is not the girl for you. She's a nice girl and all that, but she's snobbish. Oh, yes. I mean, I, I'm, what'd you say? I said Marilyn's snobbish. She is not snobbish. She's an American just like you and me. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> don't call Marilyn snobbish when she ain't. No, I, 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 no, you dummy. I mean, she's snobbish. She's aloof. 
Make up your mind, Abbott. Is she snobbish or aloof? Oh, about 50-50. I'd say she was half snobbish and half aloof. Well, a half aloof is better than none. No, no, no. <laughs> Costello, you're talking about a loaf. I'm talking about aloof. Marilyn is aloof. She's well-bred. How do you like that? Now Marilyn is a loaf of bread. <laughs> the next thing you'll be telling me, she's a jelly donut. Oh, Costello, will you listen to me? I'm trying to describe Marilyn's character. Haven't you noticed how she goes about with perspicacity? Good. When did she start going with Percy Cassidy? No. <laughs> Percy Cassidy is still going steady with Cynthia Rosenblatt. No, no, you idiot. Perspicacity is not a person. Perspicacity means a distinction. Anyone can have perspicacity. You have perspicacity. Therefore, you have distinctness. I got what? You have distinctness. Distinctness. You <laughs> don't smell so good your now. <laughs> Stop that. I said you have distinctness. You are distinguished. Or, as they would call you in French, distinqué. Did I have that again? In French? What? In French. Uh, certainly. That French... Uh, you see, the French changed the last two syllables. In English, it's distinguished. In French, it's stingé. Abbott, they don't speak French in Patterson. And everybody there used to call me stingé. <laughs> hey, stingé! <laughs> Tell you're impossible. Merle Maxwell is, is smart to keep away from you. It proves she's astute. Yes. It, 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 it. Could I have the last one again? Astute. Astute. Abbott, I stoot all I'm going to stoot from you. I can't stoot anymore. Look, Costello, will you listen to me? When I say Marilyn is aloof, I, I'm not talking about a, a loaf. Uh, aloof is a, a mark of character like distinctness. And a person who uh, is distinct has perspicacity. And perspicacity makes one astute. Oh. When you say aloof, you're not talking about aloof. No. Aloof is a mark of character like distinctness. And a person who is distinct has perspicacity. And perspicacity makes one a student. Now you're in their pitching. I may be in their pitching, but the batter is knocking my brains out. <laughs> Experience is the best teacher. Joe, back from a two-year trip in the Orient, is celebrating his return by dining with his old friend, Bob. Bob says, Cigarette, Joe? Thanks. Hmm. Camels, I see. Changed your brand, haven't you? Yeah. That was one time when a wartime shortage did me some good. You know, we were mighty short of cigarettes here during the war. True where I was, too. Well, like everybody else, I smoked any brand I could get. Tried them all, I guess. That certainly taught me plenty about cigarettes. Camels stood head and shoulders above the rest as far as I was concerned. Yes, experience is the best teacher. <clears throat> During the wartime cigarette shortage, when people smoked any brand they could get, millions learned the differences in cigarette quality. It was then that people's T-zones, that's T for taste and T for throat, compared cigarette after cigarette. Millions learned that Camels' rich, full flavor and cool mildness suited them to a T. The result? Today, more people smoke camels than ever before. Experience is the best teacher. Cry a camel. And while you light up a camel, hear Skinny Annis to sing, it's the same old dream. I can see a steeple surrounded by people. Oh, how real it all starts to seem. Just as the choir sings. My alarm starts ringing, it's the same old dream. And then my thoughts inspire a scene by the fire in a cottage close by a stream. I know it all by heart now, we're about to part now, it's the same old dream. If you but knew how many times I pretend. I'm with you. I'm sure your heart would unbend. You'd see me through until my dream had a happy ending. I can picture clearly the things I love dearly in the center you reign supreme. We kiss and I discover I'm a lonesome lover. It's a day. Holy oh, 
I can picture clearly the things I love dearly In the center you reign supreme We kiss and I discover I'm a lonesome lover It's the same old dream Gee, Abbott, I've been talking to Merlin and she turned me down again. Life means nothing without her. I don't care what happens Costello, now. Costello, put that gun down and might go off. I don't care. But it's pointed at me. That's why I don't care. Now listen to you, dummy. Hey, a voice, get in! Now, wait a minute. Listen to me, you dummy. You can win Marilyn by impressing her. She's impressed with, uh, by celebrities. So all you have to do is uh, become famous, get your name in the paper. I know what I'll do, Abbott. I'll start a fight with you. No, no, fighting with me won't get your name in the papers. At Ciro's? No, uh, no, no, no. Costello, will you? Will you listen to me? To get in the papers, you've got to get... Uh, will you listen to me? I'm listening! I want to get your uh, face in the papers. But you've got to get mixed up with somebody big. Okay, then I'll fight Joe Lewis. I, you're not afraid of Joe Lewis? No, Abbott, I'm not afraid oh, of Joe Lewis. Well. I'll go right up to him and I'll say, Joe Lewis, put up your dose. I ain't afraid of you. I'll knock your block off. That's what I'll say to Joe Lewis. Through that little slit in my armored car. I... <laughs> you talk sense, Costello. Now, look, if you want to become famous and get your name in the papers, you'll have to hire a publicity man. A man who will think up ways of getting your face before the public. How can he do that? Well, he might get all the bakeries to stamp your picture on all their soda crackers. Oh, no, he won't. I ain't gonna have kids all over the country slapping peanut butter and jelly in my kitchen. Ah. <laughs> right, come on, come on, Costello. I'm taking you to the best publicity man in Hollywood. When he gets through publicizing you, Marilyn Maxwell will come to you on bended knees. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, she will. Yes. Oh, boy, lead me to him. Yeah, well, no, 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 no. Here's his office. <laughs> Let's go in. Well, gentlemen, I'm Brown, the publicity man. The second most famous Mr. Brown in the country. Number two brownie, they call me. <laughs> As the bandit said when he stuffed the paper towel in his victim's mouth, anything for a gag. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, what can I do for you? You can take that gag you stuffed in the victim's mouth and drag it over to Tom Brenneman. <laughs> it's old enough to get an orchid. This guy must be writing for Fred Allen. Oh, quiet, Costello. Uh, Mr. Brown. Could you think up a stunt that would make Costello famous overnight? Oh, yes, I've got just a stunt for Costello. It's never been done before. I'll have him sit on a flagpole. Wait a minute. Lots of guys have sat on flagpoles. At half mass? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You call that a publicity stunt? My Uncle Mike and Patterson played a game of poker with a TWA hostess while sitting on the wing of a plane going to Honolulu. Clipper? Yes, he beat her out of a few bucks. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Brown, don't you have some sensational stunt that Costello could do? Oh, yes, indeed. As the doctor said when he slapped the newborn baby, this will open your eyes. <laughs> Costello, I'm going to have you jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh, what a stunt. I can see you now. You're standing on the rail of the bridge. That ain't me. Now you're all poised to make your leap. That ain't me. A crowd gathers to watch you, and suddenly there's a loud scream, and a man faints. That's me. Have <laughs> <laughs> it get me out of oh, here. Costello, calm yourself. Mr. Brown will think of something. Yes. I don't want to go around the world. Quiet. Oh, and listen, as the mailman said to the lady with a measles sign on her house, you've got something there. <laughs> as you boys know, Milton Reynolds holds the record for flying around the world in an airplane. Now, Costello, you're going to break that record. Tell me, have you had any experience in the air? Oh, sure. During the war, I was an ace. I destroyed 19 planes. Costello, you destroyed 19 planes? I could never get those darn things off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, Costello, if you will pilot a jet plane around the world in record time, you will be the most famous man in the history of aviation. Think of it, Costello. You'll be a hero. Marilyn Maxwell will throw herself at your feet. She'll adore you. Abbott, I'll pilot that plane around the world on one condition. I'll have to have two saxophones, a banjo, three trombones, a piccolo in the cockpit with me. What for? I fly by instruments. <laughs> <laughs> well, Costello, get yourself a sponsor with plenty of money to pay for the plane and finance the trip, and I'll see you at the airport tomorrow. Okay, Mr. Brown, goodbye. Where are we going, Abbott? Well, we're going to see Mrs. Wetwash and get her to sponsor your trip around the world. She's the only one we know who's uh, loaded with money. 
She's got plenty of the long green. She's got a few of the long red ones, too. <laughs> All right, never mind that. Knock on the door and see if she's home. Oh, well, hello there, Mr. Abbott. My, I wonder why the butcher left the tub of lard on my front porch. <laughs> Pardon me, it's Costello. <laughs> Mrs. Wetwash, I wish you hadn't said that. I was just telling Abbott what beautiful hair you've got. Oh, thank you. Uh, did you notice the little white ribbon in my hair? Oh, is that a ribbon? I thought it was a price tag. <laughs> <laughs> that was very funny, Costello. Why don't you go over to the ostrich farm and show the big birds what a real egg looks like? <laughs> <laughs> I love to see you laugh, Mrs. Whitwash. Your teeth sparkle so. <laughs> well, they should. I see my dentist twice a year. Yes, one for each tooth. <laughs> Cut that out, Costello. Uh, Mrs. Whitwash, uh, Costello is going to fly around the world as a publicity stunt, and we'd like to have you finance the trip. You know, uh, be Costello's sponsor, like. What's the matter? Did the camel people finally get wise to him? <laughs> Please, Mrs. Whitwash. I gotta make that trip. I gotta become famous. If you put up the money, I'll give you my personal note. Oh, very well. I'll loan you the money. But I'll bet you don't pay me back until I'm 60. Abbott, she wants the money back in three days. Oh. All right. <laughs> Quiet, Costello. <laughs> Mrs. Wetwash, make out the note and Costello will sign it. Oh, very well. well. I promise to pay Mrs. Winifred Wetwash $10,000. There you are, Costello. Just sign your John Hancock on this line. My what? Your John Hancock. I'm John Hancock? This is Wetwash, don't you know me? I'm Lou Costello. Oh, I know you're Lou Costello. All I want you to do is sign that note. Okay, I'll sign it for a minute. I thought you didn't recognize me. Oh, oh quit stalling. Sign your John Hancock on that note. <laughs> Abbott, call for the police. What for? This woman is deliberately and with molasses alpha thought attempting to impagle me into computing a felony. How can you say that? How can you say that? It's easy when you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> say you're John Hancock, I don't mean you're John Hancock. I mean when you sign Lou Costello, that is your John Hancock, even though you're Lou Costello. Oh, you mean when you say you're John Hancock, you don't mean you're John Hancock. You mean when I sign Lou Costello, that's my Jane Hunk, John Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> even though, why don't they make it bigger print? <laughs> cooking with gas. Well, I may be cooking with gas, but somebody keeps blowing out my pilot light. <laughs> the makers of Camel Cigarettes present lovely Marilyn Maxwell from Metro Golden Mayor, producers of High Barbary. For her camel fans everywhere, Marilyn sings. Mama, tell me, do I gotta? Mama, tell me, do I gotta? Do I gotta kiss him every night? Mama, tell me, what is proper? How did you react to Papa? You should know, cause Ma, you did all right. If I play hard to get, will I lose him? When he wants a kiss, should I let or should I refuse him? Mama, tell me, do I gotta? I don't want my dreams to totter. I don't want this love of mine to skip. So, Mama, let me kiss him, cause I did. <laughs> You taught me that a girl should do just what a mother said, cause what a mother said was wise. But I can't seem to follow through since love went to my head, cause mom, you never saw such eyes. If I play hard to get, will I lose? When he wants a kiss, should I let or should I refuse him? Mama, tell me, do I gotta? I don't want my dreams to totter. I don't want this love of mine to chill. Oh, Mama, I'm such a fool, but they don't teach that in school. Mama, do I gotta kiss him? All right, I will. Your season at 
Tea for taste and tea for throat is your true proving ground for any cigarette. Try a camel and let your tea zone be the judge. See if your taste isn't particularly pleased with camel's rich, full flavor. See if your throat isn't extra happy with camel's cool mildness. Try a camel on your tea zone now. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Three leading independent research organizations asked this question of 113,597 doctors. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was Camel. Hey, Costello, Costello, I've been looking all over the airport for you. Uh, I hope you picked a good, fast plane for our trip around the world. Yeah, but I got a real fast plane. Last night I tested it out, and it went 200 miles an hour. 200 miles an hour? That's not fast. I know, but today they're going to put in the motor. I, uh, you... <laughs> you idiot, I don't know why I'm going on this trip with you. You know absolutely nothing about airplanes. I do, too. I worked in an airplane factory during the war. I used to put girdles on P-40s and make them into P-38s. No. <laughs> when did you put girdles on airplanes? During the Battle of the Bulge. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is a very important flight. No, we've got to beat Reynolds' record. Get your name in all the papers that make you a hero in Marilyn Maxwell's eyes. Uh, we're taking off in a few minutes. Have you checked all the equipment? Yes, it's all in the plane. I got the altimeter, the velocimeter, pressure meter, and a pair of pink tights. What are the pink tights for? I want to look nice when I'm coming down the runway. I... <laughs> Hiya, fellas. Uh, hiya, Skinny. Hiya, Skin. Skinny, we're about to take off on a trip around the world. Costello is going to try and set a new record. Well, that's good. I'm just about to take off myself on a solo flight. If you're going up in a plane, what are you doing with that big can of maple syrup? Oh, I always take that along in case I have to make a pancake landing. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hello, Festo. Hey, Abbott, did you hear that? He takes syrup along for a pancake landing. Wasn't that a waffle joke? No, I... <laughs> We've got to get him some batter jokes. All right, now, shut up. Hey, here comes one of those women reporters. She probably wants an interview. Well, if it isn't Mr. Orbit and Mr. Costello, you fought little mon, you. Well, miss, I suppose you're here to interview Costello. Yes. I write all the ocean articles for Collier's Magazine. Collier's Magazine? <laughs> oh, Abbott, you know what Collier's Magazine is. That's a publication like Luke Pook. Look in Rooter's Dujust. <laughs> My, isn't all the ocean enchanting? I'll bet you're anxious to hope out for Africa in your strata loner. <laughs> no, I'd rather be booping a loon in a groohoon boost to cook a moon goo. <laughs> As we say in Spanish, you're a mañana usted para cuta la vista, do you? And your mother's busted parachute in a kiss of you, too. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you are, boy. I've got everything arranged for your trip. What a publicity stunt this is going to be. I telegraphed to the mayor of New York, and the people are getting ready for you to fly over the city. What are they doing? Taking down the Empire State Building. <laughs> Wait a minute, Costello. Why have you got your goggles around your neck? Dr. Zoris, Abbott. He told me to goggle my throat. No, no, no. <laughs> Quiet, Costello. Look, they're waving the starting flag. Come on. Let's get into the plane. Control tower to the Lou Costello jet plane. Runway four is clear for your takeoff. Costello, flip that switch and answer the control tower. Okay. Costello to control tower. We're ready for the takeoff. Roger. Lewis. <laughs> Come on, Costello, start the motors. We're on our way. Costello, we're not moving. There's something wrong. I'll check it, Abbott. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I found a trouble. What's holding us back? Is it the motors? Nope. There's a piece of chewing gum stuck under the left wheel. I... <laughs> Costello, boy, we're climbing fast. This plane can really travel. Control tower to jet plane. What is your altitude? 50,000 feet. <laughs> Roger. Lewis. <laughs> hey, Abbott, it's getting kind of chilly in here. Would you take the wheel a minute? I'll be right back. Where are you going? I'm going to climb out there on that wing and turn off one of those big fans. Fans! <laughs> Get back here, you idiot. That's the propellers. Control tower to jet plane. State your position. I'm the comedian on a camel show. No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, you dummy. He wants to know the position of the plane. Check your compass. Oh, I get it. Jet plane to control tower. We're flying due east. Due east? Roger. Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis? 
What's that guy think I am, a jerk? Roger. Lewis! <laughs> I'm glad I straightened that out. Costello, are you sure you laid the course route right? <laughs> Better check your charts and see where we are. Okay, Abbott. Ha-ha, uh-huh, this looks strange. Hey, Abbott, could you lend me a couple of bucks? What for? According to my figures, we're right in front of the $2 window at the Hollywood Park. Oh, you're <laughs> nuts, Costello. That's impossible. At the far turn, it's Barney B in front. Little Beaver a second. I J Fossil coming up fast on the inside. Hey, turn off the radio, you idiot. Now keep the plane on the course. Keep the throttles open. I'm going to take a nap. And don't call me unless you need me. <laughs> Hey, Abbott, wake up. We're running out of gas. Oh, 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 all right, Costello. I'll take the controls and we'll make a landing. All right, Costello. Jump out and let's see where we are. Hey, Abbott, just as I thought, we're lost. We're lost in a strange land. My, this is a peculiar-looking place. Look, there's something moving over there. It's a native. Question him. And see if he can find out what country this is. Okay. Hey, you. Me, Costello. Me fly great airplane around the world. Me lost. Could you tell me what strange land me in? You're in Glendale, you jerk. <laughs> hey, Abbott. Hey, Abbott. We made it. We're back. We're in Glendale. Yeah. Hey, look. Here comes Mr. Brown, our publicity man. Well, Costello, I want to congratulate you on your magnificent achievement. You have made a great contribution to science. You mean I've flown around the world in the shortest time? No, but you went from Los Angeles to Glendale in the longest time. <laughs> Think of it, 67 hours to go three and a half miles. Did you hear that, Abbott? It only took us a half hour longer than the Glendale bus. Oh, get him. (laughs) Abbott and Costello will be back in just a moment for Camel Cigarettes. During the war, the makers of Camel Cigarettes sent a total of more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. Now free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Roanoke, Virginia, U.S. Army Old Farms Convalescent Hospital, Avon, Connecticut, U.S. Naval Hospital, San Diego, California, U.S. Marine Hospital, Buffalo, New York, and Veterans Hospital, Temple, Texas. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week. Our rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are still stationed and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now back to Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Well, Costello, you were a flop again tonight. Uh, but I have an idea how you can impress Marilyn Maxwell. Now, next week, I'm going to get you a job as a lifeguard down at the ocean. Oh, fine, Abbott. I know all about the ocean. I just read a book called How to Feed Sharks Underwater by Hand. Who wrote it? A guy called Three-Fingered Pete. Oh, good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Listen again next Thursday night and hear what happens when Bud Abbott and Lou Costello get a job as a lifesaver. We don't know what flavor they'll be, but a lot of things can happen, so don't miss it. Pipe smokers, when a pipe tobacco tastes rich and full-flavored, when it smokes cool and mild, that's real smoking enjoyment. And that's Prince Albert. Prince Albert is crimp cut to burn slow and even, to smoke cool. It's specially treated to ensure against tongue bite. Try Prince Albert. Learn why more pipes smoke it than any other tobacco. Ever hear Grand Ole Opry on NBC Saturday night? Well, it's great fun with Red Foley singing our favorite folk songs, Minnie Pearl and Rod Brassfield for laughs. And this week is Red's special guest, that little musical belle, Rosalie Allen. That's Grand Ole Opry on NBC Saturday night. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. C-A-M-E-L-S This is Michael Roy in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for camels. Stay tuned now for the Eddie Cantor Show. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.